there's no better feeling than a personal win. And the State Farm Personal Price Plan can help you do just that. Talk to a State Farm agent today to learn how you can bundle and save with the personal price plan. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices are based on rating plans that vary by state. Coverage options are selected by the customer. Availability, amount of discounts and savings, and eligibility vary by state. Everything you learned in history class was a lie. Well, maybe not everything, but they skipped the best parts. Introducing Stupiracy, where stupidity meets conspiracy. Ever heard of the Olympic marathon that nearly killed its runners? Or the time a pope put another pope's corpse on trial? Join me, Scott Rizzuto, and Tim McKernan as we uncover the most outrageous historical moments and mind-blowing conspiracies you won't believe actually happened. Tune in to Stupiracy for your weekly dose of historical absurdity. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, history is dumb, but laughing at it is smart. It's involved risk. And now, live from the TCL Broadcast Studios, it's Joe Suchere and Patrick Royce with Sports Talk. I'm kind of the lonely man here. We got one guy eating pistachios. Uh, you I'm running in doing. short of breath, and uh, Reaver's uh, drinking a cup of coffee or something. So yeah, how does that work? I don't know. So is it still Rangoon. snowing or not? Uh, no, it's turning. It's turning nice right now. Oh, so it's going to be like 35 tonight. A beautiful, perfect night to a play a ball perfect game. Perfect night to play a ball game. And that one last night, they uh, somehow they managed to have a two-run game that took three and a half hours, right? 340, oh. something like that. Why was it so long? I have no idea. Players well, just... Lynn walked a bunch of guys. I know, but there was a lot of strikeouts. Too. Lynn had a lot of counts. But he had 18 90... strikeouts. Well, he had 90 pitches almost yeah. through four innings last night. He had good stuff last night. He just didn't throw it Right over the plate. Well, his problem was the grip, I think, because he yeah. he, but was, he was he was in you know he was in ninety four every yeah. every fastball. I thought he had good stuff, but he was overmatched because uh, them boys could still be waiting to score a run off Verlander. Oof. He is. I know Bert says it, and I hate to repeat anything Bert said because, <laughs> uh, but he is the the ultimate guy who who will get you out with ninety three all night long. But if you then create a threat, he'll throw ninety seven. He you know, he just goes and mm-hmm. gets it when he needs it. He's smart enough to not say oh and he's not like Syndergaard. He's not gonna throw ninety eight all the because game. He can. The whole game. Yep. If he can get you out throwing ninety three, he's gonna save a little juice and and uh poor old Miguel, he could he could bat against oh. him a hundred times and uh not get a hit. I'm but not our guy, the, Joe Maurer. He gets a hit off him. Uh, although when they really needed one, he swung at a uh, ball, uh, I think, ball four. Ooh. Was it ball three, ball four? That, was, that, that breaking ball down and in. I don't recall. Mm-hmm. But he'll at least pitch to Joe. He'll he'll think and pitch to Joe. He doesn't just throw the fastball. He sees Sano and he thinks, let's just yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, let's we'll just blow this one by him. <laughs> Miguel, very upset at that 1-1 one, one pitch. As I said on Twitter... If they'd only call that pitch a ball, it would have taken Verlander two more pitches to strike him out instead yeah. of one. But, uh, you know, and I, I mentioned this earlier, Pat, but the uh, the infield hit to Sano, um, the weight, that's that's where the weight's the problem. When yeah. he can't get to that ground ball, then you make the inning longer, and against a team like well, Houston, he get, you're going to get to killed. the ball, and then it's stuck in it. He actually usually makes that play. And I on the slow roller. He's about 70% on that play. Yeah, but that play was what he can make is the one hander when he comes in and puts that big meat hook on it. But this ball got stuck in, you could see when he caught it, it got stuck in the yeah. web and he couldn't get it out. But yeah, that, that, hurt, that hurt. That's for sure. He's, uh, that's not an error, but he's going to have 25. <laughs> If they play him there every day, he'll well, have twenty five errors. Well, and that's just it because those that play didn't come up as an error, but you know that's a play that should be made. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. Is it nice anywhere above the Mason Dixon line? <laughs> uh-uh. Chicago, how how frozen 46. do the Cubs fans look? It doesn't. On my wait, phone, you put forty six on the lake. Yeah. At uh, this time of year, oh my God. it's probably about. How about the Whiteys playing that game yesterday when they showed it? 
They had four inches of snow on the field. They basically went out there and shoveled it off. Did you see the pregame, by the way? The the electronic operator for guaranteed rate field. Mm-hmm. They put, because you know they have the colored yeah. uh, pinwheels on the top of that scoreboard. It just said, happy holidays with all the different <laughs> colors. It was pretty fun. Where were they playing? In Chicago? Yeah. Yeah. Comiskey Park, uh, which is now... Guaranteed rate, rate field. field. <laughs> Look at the Cubs, though. It's sold out. Oh, well, it's opening day. Oh, they for got, Pete's sake. They got they got to go on it. Unlike us rubes who uh, they don't baseball doesn't care about, the Cubs got to play in warm weather for 10 days before they showed up at, for their home opener. Uh, so, Yankees at Boston tonight. Red Sox have won That's eight cold. in a row. Red Sox have won eight in a row, and uh, Giancarlo Stanton is hitting like Miguel Sano. He's mm-hmm. getting three home runs, but he's striking out every time up, so... Hey, are you pretty pumped about the Timberwolves forcing that final game? Uh, a, I think they'll lose, and B, it really oh. doesn't make any difference because uh, if they finish eighth, they play Houston, and they get beat four times by 20 points. This Such optimism. This isn't hockey. No. Nope. This isn't hockey. You don't play to three. <laughs> you play to 115. Except when you're playing to Houston, you play to 125. Uh, they got no chance. They, uh, you know. They uh, can't we at least win one game and create some excitement? It's going to create this much excitement because if you finish eighth, there's no excitement. But this much excitement, you're telling me there's a chance. There's this much excitement. (laughs) It gives downtown Minneapolis two nights of additional yes incentives. Tomorrow Wednesday night, it'll be it'll be lively in there. Mm -hmm. But they'll be ready to turn on them like rattlesnakes (laughs) do. But right now, Denver's playing way better than they're playing. Mm-hmm. So I, I think Denver will come in here and beat them. I hope they the can't wild, shoot. I think the Wild will get home with a split, don't you? No. You don't? But down two? If they do, they're fine. Yeah. You know, if they get, get home with a split. Yeah, that series will go six games. Winnipeg's one of the best teams in the league, but that series will still go six games because mm-hmm. it's hockey. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, you know, it's. Everything's close in basketball. Uh, they played Houston. They didn't come close to Houston. The three, what did they play them three times this yes. year? Mm-hmm. They got beat by twenty five every time. So it's more likely in basketball that the better team wins. Always. And you're yeah. saying in hockey, it can be fairly fairly common that the better sure. team does not win. Well, Do you Joe, think the Blues were better than the Wild last year as a team? Mm-hmm. I don't. Well, and, and look at the playoff five. playoff runs last year for both representatives in the finals. I don't think Golden State or Cleveland lost a game up to the finals last year. They were all sweeps. Well, this year they'll lose some. Yeah. Because Houston's good. But all hockey, at least above the high school level, is this way now. Yeah. Because college hockey is somebody's going to win two to one. And hang, you know, the, the team that made it as the 16th seed. By one ten thousandth of a point. Your Bulldogs. The, my Bulldogs won the tournament. <laughs> Actually, my Huskies, but they choked and uh, <laughs> lost the Air Force right off the bat. So, yeah. Are you, are you going to the yard tonight? Hell no. no. <laughs> Come on, I'm let's go. I'm protesting April night games. Yeah. I'm protesting. It's, you know, as the author of the Met Stadium book, you should be protesting too. Not a lot of night games back in the Met Stadium days. Not <laughs> I, in April. I think I said seven, but I think I'm wrong. I don't think it was that many. I think it was fewer. I was trying to do it from memory because when they first moved there and had a night game in April, I counted them up and I couldn't find what I'd written at that time. And I thought the number was seven. But when we went back and checked baseball reference computerized, we found one. April uh, night game at uh, Met an opening Stadium. day of 1961. Was the capacity out there only about 26,000? Yes, sir. Oh. It was. They were still down. Well, then the I right. made a big mistake in the book because I said a surprisingly small. <laughs> well, it was. You know, they they could have went and stood behind the fence, but they were still constructing that the what became the, the left right field, field bleachers. No, the right field. Uh, they were still constructing the upper deck of the right field. The right field was just uh, wasn't even right. done yet. No, it wasn't. They were still. I didn't even know that. It well, happened in 1956, but yeah. then they get the big leagues and they got to make it bigger. Oh, okay. And what did it hold before they started? About 20, I think. Yeah, they had some NFL football games here, and uh, I think they held about 20. just some uh, 
Pre-season? Non-conference or no, exhibition? No, they, uh, they had two regular season games of the Chicago Cardinals in 1958 or 9, thinking they were going to get the team, but then they moved to St. Louis. Hmm. Okay. They thought they were going to get the team, and they had two regular season games. And Sydney, of course... Claims to have taken the check down and given it to the owner of the St. Louis of the Chicago Cardinals that they got for those two games. I think fifty thousand each or something, mm-hmm. which was big money back mm-hmm. then. The Minnesota Cardinals. I don't think that would have had a nice ring to Le it. Le Cardinal. Yeah, would have had to keep the uh, would have had to keep it though. Yeah, boy, we lucked out though with one of the best uh, nicknames. It's for a, a fine nickname. It is a fine what nickname. Vikings. Vikings oh, yeah. is yeah. a fine nickname. Yes. Well, the, the best name. Well, is- Wild is pretty good. Oh, the wildest, the you know, best name in sports. Here, I want to put you in a headlock. <laughs> the best name was Lakers, and that's gone. Lakers was fantastic. Yes. How about United? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Pat and I were just reviewing the uh, Chris Eggert story. <laughs> Oh, the uh, yeah, you're getting along pretty good there, cowboy, huh? <laughs> How are you walking? Yep, you know, that's just, it's just like a stone crab. You take that thing off, and then it grows back. Yeah. And, uh, you know, take one of them off, and it grows. Been back. walking since about three. Yeah. <laughs> I said, whoops. Yeah, well, that's the wrong Chris. Stuff happened. You know what's wrong with a base with a team playing in this weather for two weeks? What it can screw up a whole season. Everybody gets off to a lousy. You can't hit. You can't. Everybody gets off to rhythm. a lousy start. There's no. First of all, you started early. You left Florida early. Yep. Second of all, I'm not making excuses for them any more than ten other teams. You're but all these up the loss. all these teams in the north, they're they're playing at a big disadvantage because mm-hmm. you know you can't hit. You're freezing to death. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's. You know, I, it just screwing up. It can screw up a season if you're if you're pretty good, and all of a sudden you're four and ten or five and ten or something like that. Nobody's got a hit. Everybody's looking at the scoreboards, hitting 140. It's uh, it can screw up a season. They announced 15 last night. Oh, what do you think they had? Four, maybe six, maybe. Mm-hmm. What do you think? People six? are thousand, and three of them were sitting in the Bat and Barrel Club in right field, mm-hmm. the new bar. <laughs> I I haven't been in there. there. Apparently it was no. apparently it was uh, rather crowded. Yeah, that place uh, looks cool. On. That place yeah. looks really cool. Yeah, but what's the deal? You sit down for dinner there? Too? Well, it's the somebody old. somebody said you had a Murray's fifty nine dollar Murray's tenderloin with. It's the old Metropolitan. Yeah, Club. I know, but is it supposed to be dinner? So I, my guess is that they're still serving food out of there because when they did the uh, the 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 food Here's tasting that rookie, that rookie missed Damn last it. week, yes, um, they were serving the same types of dishes that they had last year. You know, the big meals and whatnot. That must have been a tough decision for you to either fly back to Florida or eat free food at Target Field. That must have been a tough decision <laughs> let for me, you, uh, Rock. Let me put a mental picture in your in your mind here. <laughs> Remember the j- graduate? Yes. When he's pounding on the glass yes, saying, right. no, yes. that was me as the plane was leaving and I had to stay to Found miss him. Taste of Target Field. That was exactly what I was doing. I think this was the first time that the AM 1500 ESPN was not yeah. represented. Because Rookie and I would tag team that food. thing. Why for, didn't you go, Reeves? I, I I didn't. I had something going on in the morning. Probably you wanted to work for the show, I bet. Mm. Yeah. And I was very committed to the broadcast that day. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it is a fun. It, it is a great deal because you get to see everything. You can find out what's new. But mm-hmm. well, and you know who the you know, smart they people didn't are. Have as much new stuff this year, which is good. No, but you know who the smart people are is like Stephanie Marsh and those because they uh, they take the day off because they serve the alcohol too. Oh, really? So those yeah. of us that have to return to work, we don't get to sample. Right. We, but we bypass all the. So uh, they take an Uber. Oh yeah, and then, or they might live downtown or whatever. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. Dang it. Well, I Hey, I St. Peter, you owe me. That's what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> you owe me. Uh, every time I go, I need to try something new. Yeah, well, that's... Uh, when do you but, think a golf course will open around here? May 1st. Oh, God. It's, I can go I, what did I read golf. today that... Uh, High schools can't get out and play? I read today that... What, it wasn't Bunker Hills. Where was it? Somebody opened last year, March 3rd. They already had... 
thousands of rounds played by this time last year. Where did I, I read it in the Star Tribune today? Somebody well, opened March 3rd. Here's the Star Tribune today. Yeah, but it's front page. I think the front page, I think it was a front page oh. story about the, uh, you know, all of what they're missing out on. I can't, you know, one of the good public courses opened March 3rd. Here, listen to this. Hey, Kenny's back. Good to see you, buddy. Where were you, Kenny? Uh, they were inquiring on your... Uh, Where were you? I'm trying to tell a bathroom story <laughs> off the air here. Right. Could you guys talk amongst yourself while I finish? I wanted to say none of your business, Bill. Right. I'm pretty sure that bathroom has to be closed permanently. <laughs> We know where he just was, <laughs> but I know where I'm staying away from. Yeah. You know where I was, Joe? I was just out in the hallway talking to John Height about uh, the Grand Tour. Do you have Amazon Prime? I don't know. You should get it. It's worth it. Okay. It's it's definitely worth it. Um, they've got two seasons out, and I kind of binge watched the last uh, first season last week, and I'm working my way through the second season. It is it's better than Top Gear. Really? Yeah, yeah. They really do a bang He's, up job. He has got it. I guarantee you. He just yeah. You've got to find it. it. It's worth. Is the it on effort. Netflix? No, it's on uh, something Amazon, called Amazon which is Prime. The same thing as. Netflix. You need to talk to someone you know Don't worry. in the house. Does she shop on Amazon? Yep. Yes, you got it. Then you, you probably have it. Have it. Yes. Uh, in my case, my kid has it, so I'm using his yeah. account. Well, um, would that mean it's only on one TV? Uh, ye, which I'm not sure. I don't know. I that, don't think that's so. That's not a good yeah. question. Maybe. These are tough no, uh, things. Yes. Yeah, is that I like a hundred bucks for the year? The Amazon Prime. Uh, Joe yes. Hammond almost died. He got in a spectacular crash. The second time, then he's almost died in a two million dollar concept car. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Great show this year. All right, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to find out if we got the did, uh, they, did Top Gear go away or are they still trying? No, they're still trying, but you know who cares about them and the <laughs> stupid BBC? It's all about these three guys, you know. Mm-hmm. Have they gone through? Have they gone to Saudi or have they have yes. they gone to any war fronts? Uh, American Emirates. They, they how about Syria? Let's go through yeah, Syria and see what you got. They I think they did to, once. Mm-hmm. Not in this uh, in in this uh, variation, no. Mm-hmm. Okay. Kenny, was it clearing up when you came in? Mm-hmm. Oh, it was dank and gross. Well, <laughs> I keep looking at this western sky, and I'm seeing blue sky. You've got to look at this with a more optimistic note. At least it's not 80, 90 degrees <laughs> and gross and hot and sweaty. Yeah, this, no, this is true. This is a relief, Joe. <laughs> this is a nice relief. Unless you're relief. trying to play a Major League <laughs> Baseball game or attend one. I did notice that when I was gone. Kudos to the uh, Twins for taking that field from just awful to play worthy. Yeah, well, it's it heated. Like, it what a beautiful pretty. job they did. They did. But uh it's uh, it still doesn't change the fact that you're trying to play when it's 25 like it was last night about the 8th inning. How do you possibly don't you need warm hands to pitch? Didn't seem to bother Verlander no, last I night. Didn't. I don't know. He's got something to warm up his hands when he gets back. I was just going to go there. How does he keep his hands warm? <laughs> well, yeah, where, would Built he, in. where would he possibly put those to warm them up? I have no idea. Well, I, she, I can't believe she travels the same. I don't think she does. Oh, either. you don't think she came to Minneapolis no, in April? <laughs> probably He's probably not. in the Caribbean. Right. Yeah. Doing a lingerie sh- shoot. You know that they've shoot. been dating since 2011? No. Yes. I think there was a and separation, be, though. But And engaged since 16. Yeah, there was a separation. Well, this sep- is a real love story. Yeah, they must like each other. Well, oh, that's rare. You know, he had a reputation as a real surly SOB, too, but I think she's... I think he's looked around and said, you know, well, life's, life's pretty good. Who pretty is good. she? Who are you talking about? Kate, 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 Kate Upton. Upton. Oh, it's Upton. He's been dating her. You know what that means? Undefeated. <laughs> Sports Talk will return shortly, but now thanks to our good friends in Owatonna, Minnesota, at Federated Insurance, where it's their business to protect your business. And nobody does that better than Federated. It's Bruce Vale from the Wall Street Journal and your money now. Who said who is she? Is that Kenny? Kenny. Oh, yeah, that's un- no unbelievable. Not keeping don't up, is take, he, Bruce? Take away his man badge. Yeah. Don't know, oh. don't care. Okay. Well, we had a pretty good day in the stock market today. Stocks were higher this morning and stayed there for the first time in quite a while. China's president made some comments today that eased trade concerns, and that led to a nice rally. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 428 points, closing at 24,408. The Nasdaq Composite gained 143, and the 
S&P 500 picked up 43 points. In the first major big bank rule change of the Trump era, the Federal Reserve has proposed retooling capital rules and stress tests for the country's largest banks. The Fed said the proposals would simplify rules for the banks without endangering the financial system. Capital requirements for some of the bigger banks would increase, but they could decrease for others, especially those that don't have global footprints. And Uber introduced a new app for its drivers that includes new features like suggestions about where in a city to drive to get more riders. It's another attempt by the ride-hailing company to win over drivers who have complained in the past about inconsistent earnings and other challenges of the job. I'm Bruce Vail with your money now on 1500 ESPN. Okay, Bruce, we thank you very much. We'll let you go and uh, talk again a couple of times tomorrow. Checking traffic here. This one's sponsored by Indeed. And uh, truthfully, not a lot going on right now. 94 looking really good between the downtowns. Northbound 35W, yeah, tad thick. 88 up to County 96, but it's not stop and go yet. Uh, Eastbound 62, of course, randomly on and off the throttle. Tracy over to W. Are you hiring? With Indeed, you can post a job in minutes, set up screener questions, then zero in on qualified candidates in an online dashboard. Get Here's John Hyde in the newsroom. Uh, it's good to have Kenny back. Just knock something off because of what Rook's doing. I like it. Doesn't this sound like some piece of crap song from the 80s? Oh my God. Don't be a dink already. I never want to hear this again. It's partly cloudy and 37 Is degrees. That age? Sounds like no. Flock of Seagulls. Mm. I was trying to remember the Blood, Sweat, and Tears song. Um, what was the name of it? You've that? made me so very happy. You've made me so very happy. <laughs> and he didn't remember it, so he couldn't. Well, fight. this wasn't even close. Mm-hmm. Uh, no. No, I was trying to change it out. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Twins in Houston again tonight at Target Field. Uh, Jake Odorizzi goes for the Twins. Lefty Dallas Keuchel pitches for Houston. Pat, so just they... inform me, do you know who threw out the first pitch at the Cubs game today? Who? Sister Jean. <laughs> the always available Sister Jean. She must have flung that in from about four feet. I would think. <laughs> <laughs> 98, it in. for God's sakes. Tomorrow night at the Target Center, uh, the Timberwolves will be playing for the whole enchiladas, they say. Denver mm-hmm. Nuggets in town to play the Wolves. Winner goes to the playoffs. Loser Go get them, boys. Does not. I'll be there. You going? Yeah, I got to uh, write some prose about it. There you go. Wild open up their playoff run tomorrow night. Sounds They'll... very optimistic there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some, uh, some pros. <laughs> some pros or pros? <laughs> Wild will open up their playoff run tomorrow night in Winnipeg on the road. Best of seven series game one. And uh, that game will be well in progress by the time the Timberwolves start, right? It's, mm-hmm. Isn't it a six o'clock or is early? It yep. Six o'clock, John? I think six, yes. News notes from today. Authorities now say a snowboarder's death at Spirit Mountain on Sunday was due to blunt force injuries caused by an accident on the hill. Midwest Medical Examiner's Office says 20-year-old Derek Harms died shortly after 2 o'clock Sunday. The incident occurring at 1.15. He was a student at Winona State University, according to the wow. Medical Examiner's Office. His family is from Illinois. The city of Duluth Chief Administrative Officer David Montgomery said emergency personnel were called to the Ski Hills Terrain Park for a man in his 20s who had disappeared while snowboarding. The man was snowboarding down the terrain park with friends and disappeared before he reached the bottom. Did he hit hill. a tree, Johnny? Apparently, yes. Mm. From the Star Tribune, police have made no secret. They're on the hunt for distracted drivers, and a forced lake motorist was well aware of a statewide campaign. Yet the driver said he couldn't put down the phone while behind the wheel. 38-year-old man was cited for texting while driving by police on the first day of the enforcement detail yesterday. The driver told police texting is a bad habit. Motorist, one of 14 drivers caught in the first few hours of the statewide distracted driver enforcement period, which runs through April 22nd. In Ramsey County, a 21-year-old man came clean when the deputy stopped him. He said, I'm not going to lie. I was trading stocks. Honest to God. Mm-hmm. Now, see, that's a sting that I think is worth it. Uh, the uh, buying alcohol up to a liquor store deal, that's a sting that I don't really need to or see. Or that pesky prostitution sting that yes, always gets you in yes, trouble. Yes, <laughs> yes. Let's yeah. just stick yeah. with the text. I, I want to know scene. why the enforcement stops April 22nd. Exactly. Yeah. This should be year-round. Yeah. Uh, this might come back to haunt me, but I think we need more undercover vehicles. We need more unmarked. unmarked. Yes. Yep. 
That's the only way they're going to get them. Put these guys in SUVs and trucks and uh, take all the markings off. I think the, hide and, all and, the antennas, and, and that, that's when you're going to get them. And why did the guy say he couldn't stop texting? It's just it's become an addiction. Oh, he's more, blaming the device. Yeah. It's the device's problem. Mm-hmm. And he was trading financial things. No, that was a different. That's a different guy. Now yeah. we have another one. I too. like the the bus when they have the uh, the cops on the school buses because that is in completely incognito, and they're high enough to see the people texting. Really. Yeah, that was a sting, I think, last school year. kids texting. They're on no, the no, 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 the cops are... <laughs> Jesus. The cops are on the bus. Yes, rookie. Sir. Hey, Rookie, the cops are on the bus, not the students. <laughs> Where are they going? Boy, I miss this. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah nothing, nothing much has changed, I'm Kenny. In another case, uh, a woman with only an instructional permit and two babies in the backseat was pulled over for driving while using the app Snapchat. Mm-mm. Remember, it's not just texting that's illegal. Any driver caught using it. Is that the one where you actually, that's the thing where you're playing kind of, uh, you know, doing dirty stuff with each other? No, well. Yes, it is. Well, but it's not. you can. Yeah, you can. It's hard to hold the phone still, though. You've got to mount (laughs) that thing somewhere. Uh, On my way home the other night, I passed a car on the freeway. She had one of these windshield suction cup things, right, where you mount your phone. Mm -hmm. She had it just to the left of her rearview mirror, right up in her face, uh, so it was mounted on the windshield. She was watching a program. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. right. Yeah. Where were you, Kenny? Were you out west? I was minding my own business. <laughs> yeah, he, won't, he won't tell us where he was. Were you up north, Kenny? I was uh, tending to, to my own affairs. <laughs> were you unavoidably detained? I, I, was, I will uh, ask you a question. Did you make it to the, either the monster trucks, or are you going to make it to the motocross? This I am weekend? sending the wife and son to the supercross. I'm okay. not. I'm not going, okay. and I do. Not do monster drugs during his testimony before. The How can they afford to wreck those things like that? H- have you seen any footage of that, Patrick? It seems like their main goal is to go out there and destroy that million-dollar machine. How can they afford to keep fixing I these things? Do not know that. It's cool though when they make the jumps. I had to go to it for about three years straight. Mm-hmm. Three years. Uh, during testimony before the Commerce Dating Commission. Dating a truck driver back then? No, John, I, had, or what? I, had, I had a child who wanted uh, to see them. Uh-huh. Uh, during his testimony before the Commerce Committee this afternoon, uh, say, uh, Senator Maria Cantwell, a Democrat from Washington, quizzed Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg over his employees dealing with Cambridge Analytica, that political data firm with ties to President Donald Trump's campaign. Asked whether Facebook employees were involved with Cambridge Analytica during the campaign. He said he didn't know, although he did say they did, quote, help out. Last week, Facebook said Cambridge Analytica may have had information on about 87 million Facebook users without the user's knowledge. Uh, During the hearing, Zuckerberg reaffirmed his support for the Senate Honest Ads Act, legislation that would disclose political ads. Bipartisan legislation would put new disclosure requirements on political advertisements in an effort to combat the kind of election meddling that Russia engaged in during the 2016 election campaign. That's what Zuckerberg gets, all this heat he's getting for uh, robbing the two twins. What were the name of the twins? Zinkelvoss. Uh, yeah. Winklevoss. Yeah, they, he stole her idea and made himself billions. You guys get your panties all in a bunch last week when we learned that the government is tracking uh, media and uh, tracking what they report and their political slant and angle and whatnot. I don't know why they're bothering. There's not much media left. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, downtown, they're redeveloping the Dayton store for an yeah, office yes, space. Yes, they right? are. Tremendous well, uh, redevelopment. Uh, during the redevelopment, they found a uh, dead, mummified monkey. Mm-hmm. Oh, they found a monkey? Thing. Yeah. Kaylin Rogers, a spokesperson for the project, said, We don't know a lot about the monkey, but I can say there was a monkey found during renovation. And a... Wrapped up in a mummy thing, or just like no, it was preserved. it just mummified. It was mm-hmm. in a thing, and oh, the okay. body. They was probably mummified. had a kid show upstairs on the eighth floor, and one of those wily little worthless creatures took off and <laughs> mm-hmm. tried to hide got from them. In the and cosmetics and, department, yes, and never got out. I'm yeah. thinking the owner left him there on purpose. It was like the, the <laughs> drunk version of Choo Choo Bob. <laughs> he finally got sick of the monkey, locked him in the bathroom. A demolition worker submitted a picture of the dead monkey to the Facebook group. Old Minneapolis and longtime customers and employees responded with tales of a pet shop on the store's eighth floor. Oh, really? And a monkey that went missing in the 1960s. Really? Uh, oh, wouldn't Ro- you think they would have smelled it? Well, not with this wind. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ms. Rogers, though, said it's not clear what the truth may be. We really don't know the story or the origin behind this find, she that said. That seems likely. Let's just go with that. Dayton's project has been underway since last year. What oh, they... How was it looking, the monkey? Looking it pretty looked, good? It looked mummified. <laughs> there. The, what what are they putting in that building? Uh, oh. Office space, and uh, there's going to be an open area. There's going to be uh, some uh, housing, too, isn't there? I think yeah. there's... Uh, and lots of uh, little restaurants. So you're yeah, gonna gross. Live, you're going to live on Nicollet Mall, huh? What is that, mm-hmm. on 7th or 8th mm-hmm. or whatever it is? Mm-hmm. Well, they got to do wow. something with it, Kenny. It's a block. Here's the monkey. <laughs> it's a basically block. I've now, seen the monkey. the monkey. Oh, you've seen it? There's right? the picture. The monkey was on it's Twitter. It's just kind of... It's a good-looking monkey. Yeah, yeah. it is. It, he, hell, he's pretty well preserved. Yeah. <laughs> is he smoking? <laughs> no, but if he came alive like every other mummy, he'd be, like, really slow <laughs> to walk. <laughs> <laughs> like Bella Lugosi. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, why just, couldn't... Oh. Too late. Tell her she can't be making any changes in the schedule at this time of day. <laughs> I don't Too think late. she's listening. Yeah. The, uh, the sor- this is from, comes from she's the... She's also not paying attention to the on-air light either. <laughs> this is from The Sun Online. The soaring demand for transgender sex robots is being driven by adventurous couples who want to wow. experiment in the bedroom. That according to a sex expert. But they're robots, right? There are robots... Uh, mm-hmm. They have both... Uh, Wouldn't the real thing be a lot better? <laughs> they have both things, shall we say. Uh, both the deals? <laughs> yeah. Uh, being shipped across the world as the global market booms, DS which dolls... One is, which one is... Which one... What order are they arranged? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know, Kenny. I had a hard time finding just the right words, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, which uh, order yeah, right do they there. not? Yeah. Not, yeah. Right. Um, not, not only are uh, they some that come with both, but uh-huh. also uh, DS Dolls, a firm that makes them, is also offering customers attachments oh. with, with each kind. Oh, okay. So like you a vacuum cleaner. Get so one in the armpit. Excuse, excuse me? If you need well, you do, uh, do they have <laughs> any of these, the vacuum they have yeah, any of these that are questioning? Uh, questioning, you know, a Q, you know, L, B, G, T, Q. Any of them questioning? Well, I think you could turn them into that with yeah, the attachments, right? I, I would assume. Yeah. Put the nozzle on there. And mm-hmm. Joe, bang, you may check my cylinder index anytime. Thank you. So oh, if you had oh. a relative who was questioning, you could give them one of these and they could make a oh, decision. You know wow. what? I, I can equate yeah. this to my son's first firearm. It was a tiny <laughs> little, no, it was a tiny little single shot 410. Yes. And you could take the barrel. Barrel off and put a twenty-two barrel on. Wow! There so you are. that's yeah. what you have. Yeah, there. that's yeah. right. Yeah. All right, it's like buying attachments for your drill. Fantastic! Yeah, what a, what's the phone number, John? <laughs> I'll give it to you off the air. Will you wear your cowboy outfit? <laughs> I will. I think we should take Joe, a break. That must have been very difficult for you. Let's we, take a Tuesday break. Yeah, yeah. All right, nice and long one. <laughs> It was very festive, wasn't it? <laughs> now we actually now we're, now we're, we're actually, actually back. Really actually, actually, I just like to see you guys move quick, really quick. You know that reminded well, me. You have to I'm te- you have to tell the listeners what you did, you dumb dumbs. During that last Procter and Gamble uh, spot, it was so upbeat, and both those two had their noses in their phone, and so I just said, "Hey, we're back," and they both go, "Oh wait, what's this festive music?" That actually reminded me of a previous time on the ride uh, when Patrick heard a State Farm insurance ad and started his interview because there was music in the middle of it. I get screwed up all the time. <laughs> Well, when you Hello? have no, when you have nine minute breaks, you get uh, right. start throwing off a little bit. Tom Kelly, Kelly is with us. How, how do you do? Kill that music. Uh, I should have a shot collar. It, it, yeah. You just zap me when it's ready to start. <laughs> oh, okay, we're back. Rick's not over yet. That's not a bad idea. That's a, you know what? That's a fantastic idea. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that what the pointing thing was supposed to be a couple oh, months ago? I gave up on the pointing. <laughs> and no, the best part was when it was when it was fully uh, bought into the program by Pat. He was trained like a monkey yeah. to raise his hand. He would raise his hand. That's what the fun part was. The whole point Pat was raising. Was to be pointed at. <laughs> yes, yes. I have some information. <laughs> <laughs> <Hang on. laughs> That's the fun part. The uh, Dalai Lama today post, yes. posted a picture on Instagram, not not for sex, Chris, 
On Instagram. Well, hey, Instagram golly. isn't a, a sex thing. Well, a little something, you know, you know but, for you know, the effort. Yeah. Showing him wearing a Green Bay Packers hat and holding a football standing next to Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. There you go. Aaron and Danica were over there That's right. on a uh, charitable mission in honor of or for Starkey, Starkey. Hearing. That's correct. Oh, wow. Yes. You are correct. And they met His Holiness today. Did they order one? <laughs> I wonder if the dolly could use a little hearing aid. He's getting up there, isn't he? I think so. Yeah. In the 70s, right? I think. Mm-hmm. Yep. Multiple long. Th- he's a short <laughs> fellow. He's a long he's a, he's a, It looks like a short fellow. The llama. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, this happened a couple weeks you ago. You came with some expectation. Mm-hmm. Then you will get disappointment. Yeah, you usually do. You're telling me. <laughs> Especially oh, if you oh, tune in from God. three to four. <laughs> <laughs> you just never know, do you, Dolly? <laughs> Eagles often wax one. Big hitter. <laughs> you know what the lamb <laughs> says? No. Gunga, galunga. Gunga, gunga, gunga. So we finish 18, and he's going to sniff me. And I say, hey, Lama, hey, how about a little something, you know, for the effort, you know. You didn't get any money. Oh, a, yeah. <laughs> on your deathbed, you'll have total yeah, There'll be no money involved. <laughs> so I got that going for me, which is nice. Which is nice. Easily it's, Bill Murray's best role. Isn't it funny? Everybody I know uses the expression, how about a little something for the effort at some point? <laughs> yeah, right. And didn't they bring him in at the last minute and yes. they kind of created this part out of the blue and it made Chevy Chase very upset because he was supposed to be the big star? <laughs> and he shot everything in one or two days. Yeah. Murray did. That's, uh, that I, that's news to me. Yeah. And he had his very untalented brother in it with him. Yeah. Brian Doyle. Oh, he was a good caddy. He's though. fun, though. He's a dumb dumb. It's, it'd be a jo- tough job. When I go to carts, you just keep it up. You <laughs> get fired. <laughs> just keep it up. Uh, we had this happen a couple weeks ago, too. It's happened again. Multiple fire units, including an urban search and rescue unit, responded to East Hollywood on Thursday of last week to help a man believed to be about 70 years old who got a, quote, personal body part stuck between the slats of a park bench. Again, jeez, we're a jock strap, Grandpa. Like his knee or <laughs> we had this two weeks ago. No, he's one this of these eighty-year-olds with the long hangers. They're boun- <laughs> bouncing off the inside of Hell. his knees. Oh, jeez, take care of those things, <laughs> you old goof. I just thought reading the story that part would be assumed, but apparently we just. <laughs> well, let's see you get your hands stuck. What's he sitting on a chair naked for? <laughs> well, oh, they're falling out of maybe his pants. Maybe had some shorts on. Or wearing those hockey I walk breezers. every day. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the man was free. Hello there. Hello there. That's very important. I am doing I fine. We're, we're I can't talk a, to you right now because of Channel life. 4 is here. We're <laughs> doing the program. Okay. Thank you. The man was freed. Uh, he, he will be okay. What do you mean the second time? Where's the other time? We had the same story the a same month story ago. About, yeah, yeah, two, two, two three weeks the, ago. The chair, yeah, the different guy. trap of the chair slats. You didn't point. You're a jock strap, <laughs> From the... Uh, well, I'll take care of your business. <laughs> right. From the you had one job uh, category. It's lucky a dog doesn't come up and try to <laughs> run off with them. <laughs> From the you had one job category. Yeah. The demolition of a 174-foot tall silo in Denmark went wrong when the structure fell in the wrong direction and damaged a nearby library. Well, oh, that's boy. right. You had one job, John. The demolition in Vordingborg shows the charges being set off at the base of the silo to make it fall in a planned demolition. However, the silo tilts in a different direction than the one the demolition crew had planned on. Lands on part of a building housing a library. Mayor Michael Smed said, luckily, and nobody was in the library at the time it was closed and no injuries were reported. Hey, Mayor, how about Copenhagen? Does that do anything for you? Ever want to visit Copenhagen? You mean like if we took a tour? No, 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 we don't want to talk to anybody. Copenhagen. I think Copenhagen would be a good town to go yeah. visit in the, summer, summer. in the summer. Wasn't that your guys' brilliant idea to include the listener, but they weren't allowed to and talk to you? We were going to go to Holland. Amsterdam for the tulips, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but yeah. nobody could talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Leading a tour. Yeah, tulips, yeah. can you smoke those? Uh, well, you could do you they People could have done that also if they were of the mind. Out in the Bay Area of California, two kids 
disguised as a tall man in a trench coat, <laughs> tried, tried to get a customer at a convenience store to buy them some beer. <laughs> so one sit up, sitting on the other shoulder. That's, that's correct. Oh, that's yes. fantastic. Were they like eight feet with three? <laughs> with Robert <laughs> Wadlow, good to see you. Marcus Rinaldi wrote, he saw the boyish looking fellow in the Loop Neighborhood Market near I-280 and Hickey Boulevard in Daly City, California. He said it was easy to tell even when with the overcoat on, <laughs> that one of the youths was he kept talking to the guy below. He's almost here, so hang on. Don't I said move. light beer, not this <laughs> yeah, crap. Right. Plus, he's all teetery, like Keith, like Keith Richards. You don't know which way he's going to fall. <laughs> when he left the store, Rinaldi said he was followed out by the man who asked Rinaldi to buy him beer, asked why he couldn't buy it himself. He answered because he left his ID at his detective agency where he worked. <laughs> 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 Rinaldi told them no, he I would have went in and beer. bought him anything they wanted. Absolutely. <laughs> what do you want, kids? Ingenuity. Bottle of Old Harper. <laughs> What do you got coming? Johnny Krasinski. Uh, we'll talk Timberwolves with him about 4.15. And Jim Cott. Our uh, bu- uh, every other week appearance with Jim Cott at 5.03 or so. And uh, then, uh, you know, general conversation on the sports topics of the day. General conversations on the topics of the day. My favorite Furman Bisher quote ever. When mm-hmm. he, Furman, when, what are you writing? Furman. Well, for goodness sakes, general conversation on the sports topics of the day. Okay. Uh, Golf right. heads to uh, Hilton Head this weekend. I looked yes. at the field. Yeah, it's mediocre. A little late. You get, all the, you, you get the Euros, they stick around, but there's yeah. not that many guys that go back to Europe anymore. They're all playing over here because they play for so much more money. Well, not a lot of the big-time Euros are in this thing. Burnt Weisberger must be in there, uh, isn't he? My guy Burnt I, I Weisberger. I didn't win. Name. I can't believe I didn't win. Did I? I 1500. got Ricky and I got Reed. I had to win. ESPN is. The winning combo. KSTP, St. Paul, Minneapolis, it's 36.